The whole world is wondering, why don't Muslim countries do anything to stop the ethnic cleansing of Palestine? You want to know the answer? Let me give you a clue. What do all these countries have in common? Indonesia, Tunisia, Iraq, Syria, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Pakistan, Libya, Egypt, Turkey. Figured it out yet? Let me explain how these countries hold the key for why surrounding Muslim countries are not stepping in to stop Israel. We all know the war since October 7th has exposed the real nature of Muslim governments. We always knew that these governments were corrupt, authoritarian, and deeply unpopular with the Muslim masses. But we didn't realize that they could also be so completely, well, useless. How did we get to this situation? People like to blame Muslims and say, well, Muslims are just backwards. Muslims are uncivilized. They can't get their act together to run a country that's stable, let alone a country that can meaningfully intervene against Israel. But this is not fair. Muslims haven't been given a fair chance to have a stable Islamic country for the past 100 years. And if you know anything about mobsters, you know why that is. Now, in the mob, whoever steps out of line gets whacked. You don't do what you're told and you get to sleep with the fishies. In this analogy, the mob bosses are the US and Israel. They treat the whole world like it's their personal property. And when it comes to being mob bosses, the US and Israel have been doing a lot of whacking lately. Before moving on, here is your quick reminder to like and subscribe to the channel. Maybe you can even take a few seconds to leave a comment. Why not? Since World War II, the US has been the most powerful government in the world and has demanded that all countries adopt its political and economic policies when it comes to capitalism, liberal human rights, feminism, LGBT, and much more. To enforce these policies, the U.S. removes any political leaders around the world who resist. The U.S. does this through what's called regime change, which is just the diplomatic term for whacking. The U.S. does this regime change through assassinating leaders or removing them through coups, rebellions, and sometimes even military invasions. There is a lot of academic books that document all these operations. A good recent book on the topic is Lindsay O'Rourke, Covert Regime Change, America's Secret Cold War, published by Cornell University. O'Rourke documents how the U.S. government launched 64 secret regime change operations and six open operations in the Cold War period alone between 1947 and 1989. In the three decades since the Cold War, the U.S. government has launched dozens of additional regime change operations, what are commonly called color revolutions. The U.S. does regime change operations all over the world. Latin America, Eastern Europe, Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia. But they do the most regime changing in Muslim countries. The main reason for this is, you guessed it, Israel. Now, over the years... Let's just say Israel has made a few enemies. Who knew ethnically cleansing people and stealing their land would be so unpopular? Muslim countries have not appreciated Israel's long history of terrorism and genocidal behavior against Palestinians, and in return, Israel treats Muslim countries around the world as the enemy. Israel's whole goal is to make sure the leaders of these Muslim countries don't pose any real threat. And if a leader does act too aggressively against Israeli interests, then they don't last very long. Most of the time, Israel gets America to do its dirty work, but sometimes they take matters into their own hands. What all this means is that since World War II, the U.S. and Israel have transformed political life in the Muslim world. They've initiated constant coups, invasions, rebellions, and assassinations against any leader who refuses to be controlled by them. As a result of all this, political leaders in the Muslim world are unique because compared to leaders elsewhere, they're usually just corrupt servants of foreign interests who don't really care about the welfare of the Muslims they rule. 
Now the proof is in the pudding. Over the past six decades, the U.S. and Israel have replaced or attempted to replace the leaders of almost all the world's most important Muslim majority countries, including Indonesia, Tunisia, Iraq, Syria, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Pakistan, Libya, Egypt, Turkey. Remember the list from the beginning? These are what all these countries have in common. Some of the leaders removed have been supportive of political Islam or Islamism. Others have been very secular and have aggressively repressed political Islam. But what all these removed leaders have in common is that they stepped out of line. They were not willing to be controlled by the U.S. and they refused to be good little puppies for Israel. The punishment for such insolence? Death. Here's a partial list of regime change operations targeting the leaders of Muslim-majority countries. Palestine. Since the 1940s, Israel has continually targeted almost every Palestinian leader with assassinations. In some cases, these assassinations have been carried out openly, like the killing of Hamas leader Ahmed Yassin in 2004. In other cases, it's less obvious. For instance, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that Israel was behind the death of PLO leader Yasser Arafat in 2004, possibly through poisoning. Indonesia. In 1966, the U.S. removed Indonesian President Sukarno through a coup. Saudi Arabia. In 1975, the U.S. assassinated King Faisal of Saudi Arabia. They did this because in 1973, King Faisal had targeted Western economies with a damaging oil embargo. King Faisal wanted to punish the West for supporting Israel against the Palestinians, so he turned off the oil supply. So the U.S. assassinated him. Iran. In 1953, the U.S. and U.K. removed Iranian Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh through a coup. Since the late 1970s, the U.S. and Israel have made constant efforts to overthrow Iran's leadership. In 2020, the U.S. drone striked Qasem Soleimani, Iran's second most important governmental figure. Pakistan. In 1998, Pakistani President Mohammad Zia al -Haq was killed. He was developing nuclear weapons and offered to aid other Muslim countries to develop their own nukes. There is significant evidence that the killing was an assassination involving both Israel and India. More recently, in 2022, there is evidence that the U.S. successfully eliminated Pakistani President Imran Khan through a coup. Iraq. In 2006, the U.S. and Israel overthrew and killed Iraqi President Saddam Hussein. This happened during the U.S. invasion and occupation of Iraq. Libya. In 2011, the U.S. and Israel overthrew and killed Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi. This happened during the Arab Spring. Syria. Since 2011, the U.S. and Israel have made constant efforts to overthrow and kill the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Egypt. In 2013, Israel participated in the removal of Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi through a coup. Tunisia. Tunisian leader Rashid Ghanouchi was removed through a series of political manipulations and since 2023, he's been in jail. Ghanouchi's jailing is partly because of an Israeli-U.S. policy of eliminating elected Islamist leaders in the wake of the Arab Spring. Turkey. In 2016, there's evidence that the U.S. and Israel were involved in an unsuccessful coup attempt to get rid of Turkish President Erdogan. Given all this history, it's no wonder the leadership of the Muslim world is so weak and so corrupt. All the honest, fearless leaders were taken out a long time ago. What's left are the scraps. In a lot of ways, these leaders have no choice. They have to play ball. They are forced to give their oil to the U.S. at a reduced price. They're forced to allow the U.S. military to build bases on their territories. They're forced to sign peace treaties with Israel. They're forced not to develop advanced weapons. They're also forced to prevent Muslim imams from criticizing the U.S. and Israel. They're forced to block any sign of Islamism in society by, for example, having the state police harass religious Muslims who have beards or wear hijab. They're also forced to pass so-called human rights laws like LGBT rights or free speech laws that allow people in their countries to insult the Prophet 
These policies are highly unpopular with Muslim populations, but the leadership in these countries push these policies to satisfy the big bosses, meaning the U.S. and Israel. Another factor in all this is that because these leaders are pushing policies that are deeply unpopular with the population, they can only hold on to their power through extreme authoritarian measures. Basically, the leaders have to rule their Muslim populations with an iron fist and not allow even the smallest expression of political dissent. So all this is basically why Muslim countries are not doing anything to intervene to help Palestine. This is a situation created after decades of U.S.-Israeli machinations and planning, and it will require time for things to change. As U.S. power declines in the next 10 years, inshallah, we may see improvements, but for now, we need to have hope. In هم يكيدون كيدا وأكيد كيدا فمهل الكافرين عملهم رويدا